Welcome to Bud's Smart Home. For those joining us for the first time, thank you for tuning in for today's discussion. In today's session, I'll be presenting my initial review of the Homey Pro Hub. I've had the privilege of receiving the Homey Pro Hub, the Ethernet adapter, and a Fabraro door and window sensor from the generous folks at Homey. Our agenda for today includes a walkthrough of the hub installation process, a brief attempt at sensor installation, and finally, I'll conclude by sharing some preliminary insights concerning this hub and also some ideas for future content focused on the hub. Considering the abundance of videos already covering the Homey Pro's features, I won't delve into the intricate details here. However, I highly recommend checking out Reed's comprehensive overview on his Smart Home Solver channel, accessible through the link that I provided in the description below. Given that my channel primarily centers around the SmartThings ecosystem, you may be wondering about my intentions with regard to the Homey Hub. Rest assured, I have no plans of abandoning SmartThings given the substantial investment of time and effort in building a robust smart home using the SmartThings system. Instead, my goal is to explore Homey's features, functions, and capabilities, drawing comparisons with the SmartThings Hub. As my understanding of Homey involves, I'll create additional content to share my insights. If you're interested in this comparative journey, consider subscribing and enabling notifications. Now, let's shift our focus to the hub installation process. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the setup. I went ahead and installed the Homey Pro app, and now I'm at the setup screen. By the way, I've already set up my account. I just need to set up things in the app. So let's tap on set up Homey. The very top is Homey Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit on the setup. The first thing it tells me is to go ahead and plug this in. When I plug this in, you're going to see white rings on the device. That means it's in startup mode, and whenever it's in starting mode, it takes between one to two minutes to get things up and running. So we'll wait for that. Once it's completely through the startup process, it'll go into setup mode, and that'll be a breathing blue ring, and that's how we'll know it's ready to begin setup. Once we get that breathing blue ring, we'll go ahead and hit continue, and there we are. Now it's searching for the Homey Pro. The green ring here means that it found Homey Pro. Now it's scanning for Wi-Fi networks. Okay, and I'll select the appropriate network and I'll enter my password and we'll be right back with you here. All right, I entered the password. It's connecting now to the Wi-Fi network. Once it's connected, you should see a spectrum ring. Okay, now it's activating. And that spectrum ring means it's working properly. So. It says, welcome home. Homey Pro is now ready for action. First, let's get to know your home. So we'll set up home. So what this does, it gives you the option to select how many floors you have in your home. I happen to have three. Ground floor, let's call that basement, first floor and second floor. We'll hit next. Now it gives you the options to select the rooms in each floor. So right now it's asking for first floor. I'm just going to quickly select uh, living room, kitchen, bedroom, and I think we, that should, that'll do it for now. We'll hit next. On the second floor, I have a master bedroom and a bathroom. In the lower level or basement, we have a finished basement that contains a family room, my studio. We'll add those later, we'll hit next, but you basically get the idea. Now these in smart things are called uh, rooms and in the Homey app, they're considered zones. You can, by the way, go back and, and add rooms or add zones and change uh, the configuration here. So that's not a problem. 
Let's hit next. Next it wants to know the location, so we'll give permission for that. And it found our location, so we give permission. Now it's all set up. So it says, let's go. Now what I'd like to do at this point is just to add a couple of devices. And to do so, you go to the devices tab at the bottom. It looks like a window. We'll tap on that devices tab. So just like in smart things, the plus sign at the top, or you can see the, the button there for connecting device. You can, you can tap on either one. I'll click on that plus sign at the top and I'll select new device. You saw back there, you could add a zone as well. The first device that we're going to add is a Z-Wave device. This is a Fabraro sensor, and uh, Homie was kind enough to send this sensor to me to evidently connect. So we'll go ahead and connect that sensor. This is a Z-Wave device, so I'm gonna tap Z-Wave on the screen and follow the instructions for adding the device here. So it's showing me to put the device into learn mode and I have to know on the Fabraro that they have this little lever up here. You tap that three times to put it into discovery mode. There's a blue light flashing. You should be able to see that, I hope. All right, it's found it. So let's hit uh, install and connect. So there you see the device. Let's go ahead and put the second part on there. So there's the sensor is closed, open, closed, open really tight area there you got to have it right on for it to work but it's working fine so that's one sensor paired I have a third reality sensor as well and I want to go ahead and see if I can pair that to do that I need to hold the inside reset button until this turns red out here there, I'll release it. It's flashing blue. It's very faint. I don't know if you can see that or not. Go ahead and put this cover back on. And uh, let's go ahead and add another device while I'm putting the cover back on. This is a Zigbee device, so I'm gonna select Zigbee and hit continue. Device is already being added. That's pretty impressive. All right, it found the uh, third reality contact sensor. We'll hit install and connect. And it appears to be all set up. Let's try this sensor. I know this one you have to pull considerable distance away. So that one's called contact sensor. The other one's door window sensor two. So both sensors are connected and working fine. And uh, so the last thing I want to show you in, in this particular introduction video is uh, how to connect it to the Miss A or what I call Alexia app. So I have um, Echo devices. So you go into your Amazon app, you search for Homey Pro, you'll find this Homey Pro skill. You simply enable to use, so it's linking the account. I've already set this up in here, so it's found my Bud Smart Home account. Then it just, we need to give permission, so we're gonna hit allow. Once it's linked, it's gonna start looking for devices, and hopefully it'll find the two devices I just added. It found a window, door window sensor too and connected that. It's considering that sensor as a temperature sensor for some reason. So we're not gonna be able to see the open close status on that. We'll skip the room set up in here. So it did find the Fabraro door window sensor and it's showing up in here as unavailable. So I'm not sure why that, that's the case, but 
we'll be able to do further testing down the road here and we'll see if we can add additional accessories and uh, compare that to pairing devices with smart things. Now, upon experimenting with the Amazon app, I realized that the contact sensors weren't recognized by the app due to the app's limited capability with specific smart devices. This resulted in the Fabraro sensor displaying as a temperature sensor only and not as a contact sensor. The Amazon app did eventually display a temperature reading, although it was not an accurate reading. However, the temperature displayed in the Homey app is accurate. After the recorded session, I added this third reality Zigbee nightlight to the Homey hub. The app impressed me with its detailed device information, so allow me to show you some of the screens that are available in here. So here is the multifunction sensor, and I'm gonna turn the illuminance up so you can see the light. If I go back a screen, I can turn it on or off. If I go to this screen, I can change to any of these available colors. I can also select the color wheel and make adjustments there as well. Um, if I go to the next screen, you can see that this multifunction light light has the features of illuminance as well as motion. If I put my hand in front of the device, you can see the motion alarm uh, show up there. Also, if you want to look at insights for any device, you can see, for instance, a history of all of the illuminance levels. Um, and this can be accessed via hour, day, week, month, and so on, which is a really nice feature. And if I back out of that, there's a flow screen that shows you what flows are specific to this device. And I've created a couple of those I'll review in a moment. And then I'm gonna to go to this more on the bottom, the lower bottom. And when I click on more there, you see that uh, there's a lot of information on this screen. You can look at the apps that are installed. You can look, you can create variables. You can look at the alarms that occurred. You can invite guests just like you do in the SmartThings app. The battery screen is really nice. We're looking at the contact sensor. That's this third reality contact sensor that's powered by, shows you the type of battery that, it, that is installed and uh, also shows you the percentage of those batteries and it's at 29% right now. There's a lot of other information in there, but I don't want to get into too much detail at this point. Um, but just I want to add that after creating the night light, I created a couple of flows as I mentioned. The flows, as you likely know, are Homie's term for routines when compared to the SmartThings app. Initially, I tried implementing two routines within the Homie app, but I was not able to achieve the, the desired results that I wanted. I then opted for the advanced flow feature, which must be accessed via a PC or a Mac. I designed the flows that you're seeing now to activate the third reality nightlight after each contact sensor is open, and then turn off the nightlight when each contact sensor is closed. Additionally, I programmed the RGB nightlight to turn green when the Fabraro sensor is open and red when the third reality sensor is open. Let me demonstrate. So there is the Fabraro sensor. And that works green when you open and turns off when you close it. And let's look at the third reality. There it's red. So those are working very nicely. I also experimented with the virtual sensors while designing my flows. In doing so, I uncovered a limitation with regard to the Amazon app. Stay tuned for a future episode where I'll guide you through the process of setting up these virtual sensors within Homey, and I'll tell you a little bit more about this uh, shortcoming that I discovered. Speaking of future episodes, I learned that Homey Pro can integrate with certain IP cameras. I'm eager to explore this by attempting to integrate my Amcrest cameras. If successful, I'll produce content demonstrating how to incorporate your PoE cameras into the app. Additionally, I have a complex routine for my SmartWings outdoor shades requiring the use of sharp tools along with smart things. I plan to investigate if I can execute the entire routine within the Homey app, taking into account factors such as time of day, cloud cover, wind levels, and freezing temperatures. 
These are just a couple of the ideas for upcoming episodes. I'm certain more will emerge as I delve deeper into Homie's capabilities. So that wraps up today's episode. I must say I'm genuinely impressed with the Homie app thus far, and I'm eager to explore its capabilities further. Don't forget to enable those notifications so you don't miss out. Until next time, stay smart and stay connected. This is the future. Evolution.